This is our heat pump. We've had it a year now, and well, I can give you finally what a lot of people have been asking for, the full data, the full cost, the full amount of kilowatt hours of electricity this has used throughout an entire 12 month period, including one of the coldest winters for quite a few years really, last year. So um, because it's actually starting to get cold and we're almost about to put the heating on for the first time this year, I think I'll do the rest of this video inside. Right, that's a lot better. But first, I have to tell you something important about smarthomecharge.co.uk. They've sponsored this channel for years, so I'm not going to bother with the PR marketing video. I'll just tell you how it is. They've got very good prices, they operate nationwide, and they've got a brilliant website which has got a lot of tools that I think you would appreciate if you're at the beginning of your electric car journey. You can pick the car you've got. You can then think, well, what's the best charger for me? You can pick your charger, and then after that, it can tell you whether or not you're eligible for a certain tariff. So if you want Octopus Intelligent Tariff, that's the one I'm on, it's probably the best around at the moment. Well, in this example, the car is not supported, but the charger is. So you are eligible for Octopus Intelligent Tariff, and you can compare many different chargers, everything essentially charger related, unsurprisingly, from smarthomecharge.co.uk. I trust them, my brothers trust them, Harry's trusted them, Many people have trusted them. Have a look at their Trust Pilot score online. Please do visit smarthomecharge.co.uk and thank you to them for sponsoring this video and ultimately keeping the channel alive and helping me do things that I'm about to talk about. Right, before I move upstairs to something that's been absent for far too long, the whiteboard of truth is back. Let me just tell you, as I have to do in every heat pump video, a few mistruths bold faced lies and just things that people have got wrong when it comes to heat pumps because I get trolled, quite frankly, in every heat pump video from people who have zero experience of them telling me that I'm going to freeze to death in winter and so forth. I really don't know why you're watching a heat pump video if you don't like them. I hate Strictly Come Dancing. You know what? I don't watch it. Anywho, let's get on with it. I have a five kilowatt heat pump. That is the amount of heat it outputs, not the amount of electricity it can draw. The most I think that tops out at is about 2.6 kilowatts. That's if it's running at its highest. Like a gas boiler, like a, like a car, sometimes it uses a little, sometimes it uses a lot, sometimes it'll be anywhere in between. On average, I reckon that's running at two, three, 400 watts. In winter, it'll be higher because it depends on what temperature it is outside and various other factors. So you know, this whole thing of you have to leave them running 24 hours a day, which is a load of rubbish, doesn't mean that it will be running at 2.6 kilowatts for 24 hours and therefore will use... No, not like that at all. The reason here it has to be on all the time isn't because you have to, it's because you want to. That's the most efficient way of doing it. Efficiency equals savings. So think of it like a bucket with a hole in the bottom. So it's trickling out water and you want to put in the water at the top of the bucket at the same rate it's coming out. So effectively, the water level in that bucket never drops. So you're putting the heat in at the same rate the house is losing it, which is why, and I cannot emphasize this enough, whoever plans the heat pump in your house and tells you what radiators you may or may not need to replace, they are the key to this. If you get a salesman coming round who just does this and writes, a price down or says we'll get you a figure, walk away. A proper survey should take them, well, at least a few hours in your house and then probably another day or so away. Otherwise, they're not doing a survey. They need to know exactly what your house needs to tell you exactly what the house needs. The house I am in right now has had the same level of insulation for several years, long before we got the heat pump, which we've had for one year, nothing has changed. You do not need to hyper insulate your house to fit a heat pump. It will make it run more efficiently. So that's why people tend to do that first, but you don't need it. My heat pump can run up to 75 degrees centigrade. Modern heat pumps can. So I could, if I wanted to, run it at the same temperature that the gas boiler used to do. But I don't want to do that because it will cost me more money. A gas boiler would benefit the same way if you insulated your house in as much as a heat pump would. So that's the first thing you need to do. Insulate the house so you use less heat. Then you can think about a heat pump if you wish, 
we replaced a failing gas boiler with the heat pump because, well, if we we're ever going to do it, that was the time. It suits us. Might not suit you. I couldn't give two hoots if you buy a heat pump or not. We have solar panels and, well, that's the key, the home battery system, especially in winter when the solar panels don't really do anything. Why does a heat pump, and this happens all the time in terms of questions in the comments section, how uh, long will it take to pay itself back? Now, it will actually pay itself back for us, but we didn't do it for that specific reason. That's, that's a bonus. No one ever asks the question, I'm getting a new gas boiler. When will it pay for itself? I'm getting a new kitchen, I'm getting a new car, I'm getting a new, I'm going on holiday. When will it pay for itself? Sometimes people want to buy something because they want to buy it. The difference between a brand new gas boiler and a brand new heat pump is still, well, considerable. And no, you don't need to replace all the radiators in your house. You don't need to have underfloor heating. That's another thing that won't go away. Again, this house is exactly the same as it was from when we had the gas boiler, with the exception of five radiators of 13 that got replaced for just double panel ones instead of single. That's it. We could have just left it as it was, but we'd have had to run the radiators at a slightly higher temperature and the heat pump would run at a slightly less efficient rating, which would cost me more money. Think of the heating engineer or whoever does the calculations as the architect, like a computer system. Put a crap system in, then it won't work very well for a company. Doesn't mean that computers don't work, it means that the idiot that installed them hasn't done a very good job. Right, I've ranted on enough. I think that's answered all of them, probably. There's bound to be some I've missed. Let's now go upstairs and figure out how much this is used over a full 12 month of, well, heating and hot water. It's back, the whiteboard is back, and this one's gonna be fairly straightforward. The amount we've used for heating throughout the year well, it's actually a year and two weeks, but I'll ignore that, is 2,538 kilowatt hours worth of electricity for the heating, 948 kilowatt hours for the hot water, again, throughout the year, giving us a grand total of 3,486 kilowatt hours worth of electricity for 12 months and two weeks worth of, well, heating and hot water in this house. Telling you how much this has cost us to run in money terms is surprisingly difficult because not only have we got time of day tariff, it's seven and a half pence for six hours at night and nearly 30 pence for the other 18 hours. That changed uh, part way through this year. We've upgraded our battery, so we've got 19 kilowatt hours worth of storage now instead of the eight that we had before. And we've got an electric car. Well, we've got lots of electric cars that have been charging here over the last 12 months. Lots of press cars that we've had for like a week at a time. So I can tell you how much we've imported. I can tell you how much the solar panels have generated minus the export. So I know how much our total consumption is. I just don't know how it's broken down in terms of this is charging for the car. This is the house. This is the heat pump. What I can do is tell you how much our pence per kilowatt hour average has been since all the uh, tariff was in place and the bigger battery system was in place. So everything that we've imported from the grid over the last six or seven months, I think it's been, averages out according to Octopus and the statistics at eight pence. So 8.075 pence per kilowatt hour. That's how much of everything we've taken from the grid it's costing us. And that's how much it should cost us maybe less than that really, because I've, I've been tweaking, um, over the next 12 months. So if we take that as that's what we should use next year, although in theory it should be less, because again, I've been tweaking it to be more efficient. If we base it on this year's usage and the price that we should be able to obtain over the coming 12 months, then that much should cost us in this house for now, uh, and I know we've got a lot of equipment, I'll come back to that in a second. That should cost us, what was it? £282 for our entire heating and hot water for a full year, full 12 months. Now, how much gas did we use over the pre previous years? Which obviously isn't last year because we didn't have a gas boiler, it's the previous ones to that. Again, due to missing bills from Octopus, I can't give you an exact amount, which is thoroughly frustrating. I think we've used around 13 to 14,000 kilowatt hours per year on average, in this house I mean. 
Um, we use six and a half thousand kilowatt hours just for winter alone in gas. So six and a half thousand kilowatt hours for three months of the year instead of three and a half thousand for the full 12 months. Obviously winter uses the bulk of that. For me to then say, oh look how much cheaper it is than gas is a little unfair. The house hasn't been optimized as much for the gas boiler as it has been for the heat pump. You know, we haven't tweaked everything. We haven't got the heat loss calculations done for the gas boiler with the most efficient gas boiler, blah, blah, blah. I think it is about 950 quid, three years worth of gas. So we're saving around 600 quid to 700, six to 700 quid a year by having a heat pump. That's about what I predicted last time. So that's only really possible because we have the home battery system, which will help us significantly through the winter because the solar panels aren't really doing any, anything at all, certainly in the really, really coldest days of winters and the dull ones. It will cost you no more to run a heat pump than the gas boiler, but of course the heat pump will be a lot more expensive to install. Not for everybody. Some people are finding after the grant, it's surprisingly cheap and about the same as a gas boiler, but that's quite rare. All this electrification stuff we've got, you know, the, the batteries, the solar panels, the heat pump. It's like a jigsaw, like jigsaw pieces. The more pieces of the puzzle you have, the more sense it makes. Solar panels make sense, a home battery makes sense on a time of day tariff, but together they make a lot of sense. Once you've got that, then add a heat pump to the jigsaw mix, and again, it then makes sense. If we didn't have solar panels and a home battery system, would we have gone for a heat pump? Well, purely financially, no. I'm not saying otherwise. It makes sense for us, doesn't necessarily make sense for you, but 282 quid for a full year is why, or partially why, we added it to our mix in our house. And we're now pretty much done. So for the next however many years we spend in this house, this is the forever house, if you will. You know, we've got the panels, we've got the battery system, we've got the heat pump, and we now have a house which is probably the cheapest to run it can possibly be without going to ridiculous levels like triple glazing or something like that. I reckon uh, estimating it, and this is really for another video, we're probably looking at about six to seven hundred pounds a year for our total utility bill for this house. Six to seven hundred pounds for everything for a full 12 months. Now before you think that's all right, but it's not that good, that includes 20,000 miles of fuel for the car because that's roughly what we do from home charging alone we do about 25 a year so let's say 700 pounds 700 quid to run the house and 20,000 miles worth of fuel for a car that is why we've got all these pieces of the puzzle it's cost us a lot of money i'm not saying it hasn't although not as much as it would do today because when we got the solar panels that were far cheaper when we got the original battery it was far cheaper than today's prices because everything's ballooned that's why i've done what i've done there's environmental reasons but over the last nearly 10 years of living here it's taken us that long to get these things in place all that has meant we now have a very 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 cheap to run house and car i guess um and now we can well use those yearly savings for, I don't know, cars, I guess. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so it looks like we're running at three for hot water and four for the heating system, because obviously the heating runs at lower temperature and therefore more efficiently. Again, I've been tweaking. I think I can get that up a bit more by doing various stuff that I'll bore you with in another video. So now I think what I need to do is figure out how much it would cost you if you didn't have our ridiculously low pence per kilowatt hour. Right, uh, so if you average 15 pence per kilowatt hour for your intake, so if you're on a flat rate, this is very simple to figure out, but if you're on a time of day tariff where it changes, then that's where it's kind of complicated. Uh, but that would cost you 523 pound if you pay 15 pence, 20 pence is 697. 25 pence per kilowatt hour would cost you 872 based on our usage and 30 pence per kilowatt hour is just over a grand. Although no one should be on that now. Um, even the price cap is lower than that. So this is where, again, the pieces of the puzzle come into it. It's the solar panels, it's the home battery, it's the time of day tariff, that's key. And of course the heat pump as well. So our hot water is heated up. The hot water tank is filled during the cheap period and then that sees us through the day. 
until it's filled up again on the other cheap period. So all that hot water is done at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. The heating, well, that comes on when it is needed. So that's where the battery comes in. But if you don't have that, then that would obviously increase your average consumption in terms of cost, because you'd be paying a lot more peak than off peak. This is why it's very complicated and everybody is different. You're gonna to have to do some of the calculations yourself, but at least this figure here, which I'm gonna underline in red because it's important, that's the one that, well, you could probably use if you've got a relatively modern house like ours. This was built in 2006, I think. A heat pump can work in any property. Okay, I've seen it in many, many. If it doesn't, it's been badly planned. It will run less efficiently in something like this, in a less efficient property, in something that's leakier because of its age. But that's why everybody's different and that's why you need to get the heat calculations done because you might think it's not worth it for us. And that's fine, just don't get one then. Although you can watch it in the previous videos and look at my playlist for the, I think it's called Eco Home Playlist. That's got all the heat pump videos in it. So if, you want, if you've got any questions, they're all answered before in those videos. But after the grant, I think it cost us about eight grand for this, for, for everything that we did, which is a lot of money. And that's about four and a half to five, I think from memory, more than the new gas boiler would have cost us. So it's cost us four and a half-ish grand more to get the heat pump, but we're saving six, 700 quid a year. So I'm happy with that. But of course, the solar panels and the battery and why it's that cheap to run. We would have had the solar panel and the battery anyway. They have other savings. It's not just that, you know, we haven't got all three of these just to save on heating. Let me know if you've got a heat pump and I will say this once more, just because it doesn't seem to sink in and some people skip the video. If you've got a heat pump or if you know someone who's got a heat pump and it's just not worked very well, shut up cat. That's because, shut up. That's because whoever installed it didn't know what they were doing. It's all down to the planning, isn't it, Homer? Thanks for watching, guys. As always, consummate professional when doing a video. Um, they're the figures. Let me know what you think. Please do like, subscribe, all the usual crap. We have the Driving Home channel. And, um, well, I'll just end it there. If you want to subscribe, or click the join button as a member. And I'll just leave you with this purring. Soothing. No, don't stroke my microphone.